How's it going guys? John here coming at you with another video and this time I'm going to do an illustration in Clip Studio Paint. Um, this is going to be an illustration for my Libre Art uh, project which is Creative Commons Art. If you're interested in supporting that please visit my website libreart.online. There's links to Subscribestar for that as well as just ways to just donate to that as well. The whole goal of that is to just create uh, Creative Commons art, art that uses uh, attribution, Creative Commons uh, 4.0, I think. So my art, anything on that website and on my Subscribestar page for that is free to use in any project. So if you, if you are working on a video game or a tabletop RPG or you just need quick, uh, you know, just quick art, uh, there's ready-made art there on my website and I provide the PSDs on my Subscribestar for all the art that is on the website as well so please check it out support it also use my affiliate links at the bottom of the video here in the video description such as uh, my affiliate link for clip studio paint if you purchase it through um, if you purchase clip studio paint through my affiliate link uh, you help my channel out you help my art out and help me make more stuff like this and if you're looking for art supplies as well make sure to use my blick uh, affiliate link as well which if you're gonna buy acrylics oils um, watercolors paper pens ink any of that kind of stuff for your traditional art needs please consider using my blick uh, affiliate link I use blick um, I use blick when I was in art school it was just a really good way to get cheap affordable but still very high quality art supplies that you may need for all your traditional art needs so make sure to check that out but on to the video today this video today is uh me revisiting something from 2019 so like three two two or three years ago uh this was from art school i was at academy of art university at the time taking a digital painting course and i wanted to um i, I was tasked with doing a scene here an illustration and i had these thumbnails here the whole goal was to tell a story and you can see the varying levels of like story being told here probably number five still life is like the least um story like doesn't really tell a story and come to find out though these other ones were not acceptable in the class because they had characters in them and at this point in the class we were not allowed to paint characters in our scenes yet we had to tell a story with this particular assignment through objects uh, so, um, I had all these different ones. I, I wanted, I love fantasy art, so I knew I kind of wanted to go the fantasy art route. And, uh, I ended up going with number, it was a common, I, I was torn between number three and four, uh, the wizard there and the wizard reading. And I thought it'd be, I thought it'd be cool initially when I thought I could draw characters in this painting to have the, the wizard kind of levitating, reading this magical tome. And come to find out, we were not allowed to do that. So, I ended up going with that one, and I ended up picking this here. So this, and I, this is what, and why I want to revisit this illustration because I had to paint this illustration in Corel Painter, and I hate Corel Painter. I just cannot stand using it. I understand that, and my instructor, I made it known in class. Like I hate this program. Uh, my instructor loved it, and I was like, I mean, that good on you, man. If you love this thing, that's that's fantastic for you. I am not into this software. At the time, I didn't have Clip Studio Paint. I was more of a Photoshop guy, and I really wanted to paint this in Photoshop, and you just were not allowed to. So, uh, and I didn't want to try cheating, because if you're a good digital artist, I think you can tell when particular Photoshop brushes are used as opposed to ones in Corel Painter. So I kind of wanted to revisit this because I really love Clip Studio Paint. I think Clip Studio Paint finds a good middle ground between uh, Photoshop and Corel Painter, meaning it does a good job of like simulating paint brushes and how uh, paints and uh, interact with each other, blending and all that kind of stuff, getting really nice painterly textures. And, uh, but also keeping the simple intuitiveness of Photoshop. Photoshop's brushes are very, in my, I mean, once you figure them out, they're very simple to use. And so I wanted to, uh, revisit this painting and, um, 
I'm going to start from here because eventually I'll show you guys the finished thing that I did in Corel Painter. I'm not too proud of it. Here's the finished painting in Corel Painter. I just could not get the software to do what I wanted it to do. And so this painting is probably going to go in a very drastic and different uh, way than this one went. And so obviously the story here is that this book is levitating and the wizard that was reading it got sucked out of his shoes out of his boots and into the book and he's trapped in the book now uh so be careful what you read kind of kind of story here so this was a fun exercise actually being able to tell a story through an illustration without characters in it can you still tell a story about what's going on in the scene uh without characters in there and so it's definitely a good challenge. I highly recommend you, you do this, but uh, I'm revisiting this and I'm going to, to re be revisiting this um, with uh, fresh eyes two years later and with software that I actually kind of enjoy using more than Corel Painter. If you like Corel Painter, I mean, good on you. You know, it is definitely a viable, useful software. It's just not my favorite thing. It's just far from my favorite thing. So uh, I'm going back to, let's see here, where is it at? This version here, um, I'm gonna probably paint over this here. Everything's kind of on one layer, which is fine. That's generally how I like to work and paint. And I think this part of the video will be sped up as I work and paint on this and uh, I'll, I'll do some voiceover over this as I'm working. It's just hard for me to uh, paint and uh, and talk at the same time. I end up going through long bouts of silence or I end up making mistakes in my painting. I'm not quite that masterful yet where I can sit and talk to you and explain what I'm doing. So without further ado, let's get into this painting and uh, make it happen. And let's see what we can make. All right, so I've again reverted back to an old thumbnail that I did while I was in school. This was an aspect of the project that I had to turn in. And I'm just going to go in and try and fix a few things. For instance, as you can see here, I kind of felt like the uh, angle of the book, uh, pages opening, and the covers opening and everything was not quite right. Looking at it again, and I noticed it back then too, but I just I hated working in Corel Painter, so I didn't really bother with it. But looking at it then too, I, I realized that the perspective was wonky, and so just trying to fix that first. Because there's nothing quite as bad as working on a painting that is really not that great uh, from the start. And I'm just using the uh, flat oil brush. Again, you can download these ones from the uh, uh, material download section of Clip Studio Paint. So uh, I. I think you can just search for flat oil or I don't remember the exact name of the brushes but they were like some brushes that simulated oil paint and I, I rather like them although I have another video coming uh, coming out soon probably within the next few days or so that covers me using uh, a different brush that I really like it's actually I think a default brush in Clip Studio Paint that uh, I've kind of gone back to and really uh, enjoyed. I have had success with it in the past and then I kind of forgot about it because I tried to, to, to figure out my style with other kind of brushes but it's like a watercolor brush and I've come to really really like it and uh, it, it just it, it does like everything that I want it to do in one brush so pretty much I'm just using like the default real pencil brush from uh, in, this, in this next painting and the real uh, the, the smooth watercolor brush but for this one, I'm sticking to the flat oils because at this point, I was uh, this is what I felt comfortable with. But art is a journey like that, you know, and I'm still an amateur in a lot of ways, very much so, and I'm just still trying to find my voice and what I like and what what I want to be. So, you know, you, you got to kind of experiment. And what's I mean, this might be disheartening to some people. I'm at that point still, and I've been trying to get better at art since 2012 that's when I started taking art seriously so it's a process it takes time and uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world so don't get don't beat up yourself because you don't feel like you're where you're supposed to be uh, I do that to myself far too often uh, I'm my own worst critic I'll paint something and instead of looking at the little victories that I 
that I had in, in that painting, I, I focus on all the negatives, and I really need to stop doing that. But yeah, I'm working in grayscale here. I don't always do this, but for this particular painting, it, it working in grayscale is not like my go-to way of doing it, but it is a method, uh, and you can see here I'm using an overlay layer to color everything. It is a method that I use when I feel like I need to uh, plan a large complex scene out like this. So, you know, there's a lot of background stuff. Painting all this from the start with color just seemed too daunting to me. And so I, I oftentimes will use color layers and blending modes and all that kind of stuff on top of a grayscale painting in order to get what I want. So I'm actually changing the color from the original one here. Uh, the original one, uh, I'll pop it up on the screen here real quick. It's, it was pretty bad. Like the colors, it's not just that the, my underlying painting was bad, but like the, the colors that I chose were bad. And I decided to go with like an overall green glow to the entirety of the scene, kind of this green filter, because green is oftentimes associated with like sickness and creepiness. So for instance, when you look at a lot of uh, a lot of like art for the Call of Cthulhu games, which I've, I've done some work on, they use a lot of greens and yellows and things like that, uh, and sometimes blues and purples, but there's a lot of green when you when you kind of like just Google like uh, Cthulhu. If you go to Google and you images and you Google Cthulhu, I guarantee you're going to see an overwhelming number of images in green. And it's because green just has this otherworldly effect to it. It, it kind of signals something innate in us that uh, blues don't don't necessarily uh, uh, signal to us in our brains. And so the original one had a lot of blues and purples in it. And to me, it just felt like the scene was safe. So this person is obviously, this wizard, opened this book and is reading this book that he probably shouldn't have been reading and uh, he gets sucked into the book and it's it, it shouldn't be um, it, it shouldn't that shouldn't feel safe it shouldn't feel like comforting and I kind of feel like blues sometimes have that feeling I mean it can depend on the scene but the way I had had it struck before the scene felt too calm and so what for me one way to really make it seem eerie and creepy and like this isn't this wasn't supposed to happen. This wizard did not open this book expecting this to happen. Is to switch the the color focus to green and give it that mysterious, creepy, sickly color, because it just it just signals that within us. A lot of different colors kind of have that subconscious sort of uh, feeling in us, or they they invoke those sorts of things because. Um, for instance, yellow and and red, we all know, it signify color. Or, or signify hunger like you can you can uh, it makes you hungry which is to me funny that those are the communist colors and oftentimes communists are starving but that's besides the point uh, but it's it's funny how colors kind of play off of our emotions like that and so that's kind of where color theory comes along and I'm no expert at it um, I've never really tried to, to be I've, I've taken color theory courses at Academy of Art University so you know I that's where I kind of learned a lot of this, but and it's definitely useful. Uh, but you can learn a, a lot of this stuff by looking online or looking at, for tutorials. Uh, going to CGMA, I, I recommend CGMA as an option for schooling if if you feel like you need an instructor. They have color and light courses there that would be very beneficial to you. But um, yeah, colors evoke different emotions, and I just felt like the original one just it just didn't it looked too safe, and so. Already, I think that this looks better at this point here with these colors because it just paints an eerie glow and I'm putting it in that candlelight and everything uh, in order to make it look um, just eerie, creepy. Again, like this wizard opened this book and he didn't expect this to happen. Uh, he got sucked out of his boots and into the book and he this was not what he was expecting. So... Uh, and speaking of the boots, I'm kind of redesigning them a little bit, changing the shape. They were kind of like these weird pointy boots before, and I'm, I'm kind of changing that up a little bit, making them um, 
a little more. I end up adding like metal buckles and and steel toes to them, and um, making them look a little more medieval, I guess, instead of just like generic pointy boots, almost like cowboy boots. I don't know. I didn't I didn't like the design of them before, and uh, I'm just working on this, these stacks of books here. I probably could have done a better job of the perspective in this painting, but it's also one of those instances where. You know, I, I could have done perspective lines and figured out like exactly how these books will sit, but I've kind of come to the point where I've done enough perspective drawing in a lot of ways to where I feel like I need to work on just seeing perspective. I was watching some Sparth tutorials that I have. Sparth is a concept artist at uh, for a lot of the Halo games and stuff like that. Um, he was at Bungie. He might be at 343. I'm not sure where he's at now, but... And these tutorials are, I was watching were from quite a few years ago that I had downloaded off of Gum, from his Gumroad. And uh, he kind of talked in one of his videos about how like he doesn't really use perspective grids anymore. Like He just tries to eyeball it. And sometimes those little imperfections that you get like work out for the best. Like They make the scene a little more interesting instead of having this like mechanical, uh, accurate sort of... Uh, of, of view in the scene so I, I tried it with this you know and I, I, I could have gone in and, and had a perspective grid and made sure like the little writing desk in the background and all of the books are going to their proper vanishing points in the horizon but it, it's such a close close shot too like it's kind of unnecessary as well maybe maybe if this was a, a city scene or something like that a much wider bigger scene I would use a perspective grid but it just seems unnecessary here and uh, just trying to get some room light here on these books again trying to adjust them I think if I could go back and redo this I wouldn't have had them all I would have had the exposed edges of pages and then spines kind of twisted around so that you get more variety because as it looks now it's it's like all the books are stacked the same way and that was just the original way I drew it and I just didn't feel like uh, redoing it I guess but I think I should have but that's just the, the problem of being lazy like me and um, and uh, not uh, not really thinking things through going back to the writing desk here in the background trying to add some like carved wood look to it and make it a little more interesting as you can see I added some wood check uh, wood patterns on the front there kind of painted those in and working on the pages just trying to make the scene flow together this this area is like the focal point definitely the book is the focal point I'm thinking the, the book and the boots are the focal points so those need to be very well fleshed out and designed and then since the writing desk is behind the book uh, you're gonna just see it naturally because it's next to what I consider the focal point in this painting and so that's why I'm kinda putting some time and effort into that so yeah you can see the paintings really starting to come along here like even right here I, I feel like if I had to stop here like let's say I was working for a client and I had to stop here uh, this would be like you'd get the point across even though the top is like really, really rough, it does, does need work up there still, but even though it's really, really rough, you would be able to get what the scene is about. But here I'm working on these back images here, and I was kind of looking at uh, older paintings of like the masters and stuff like that, and I was keeping that in mind here as I was working. Not saying I executed it at what good at all, but I was trying to keep this concept in mind that objects in shadow have like fuzzier edges, so if you're looking at an image uh, or if you're looking at something in the dark, which this image is very dark, it's, the light is coming from candles and it's going to be coming from this magical book. And so everything else, like as it gets higher up here, so these glass bottles and these books and all these other sorts of things up here, they are like in the background in the dark. And so you're not going to see hard, crisp edges you're going to see a lot of lost edges as as things kind of turn into the darkness so I'm trying to keep that in mind and trying to make I'm using a blending brush in order to kind of fuzz all that stuff out 
kind of make those details less sharp and it gives you the added bonus of the areas that are in light here that are the focal point of your painting it, it makes them more of the focal point because the back area stuff is fuzzy and I was one of those artists still am in a lot of ways one of those artists that spends way too much time focused on the background uh, in the things that don't matter and instead of just getting those things to a point where they just serve to set the scene and the mood and kind of fill out the space and of what this scene is rather than just uh, what I normally do is I go in and give like way too much detail to like a glass bottle on the top shelf in the dark that shouldn't be that that shouldn't have that much detail visible with it so the, the, that is one thing to keep in mind as you're working as well is to to consider where light sources are and then does this area need that much detail or can it just be kind of like a an amorphous blob in the background because that's what it needs to be and if you're looking at it with your natural eye and not in a painting would would that be what it would look like and to a degree I I, I think that a lot of these books in the background would look like that so uh, that's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to do so I'm just in the finishing stages here. I'm not trying to make this an amazing painting. Um, I'm just trying to fix it a little bit. Not that I want to get on the art fixing train, which has been a whole debacle as of late, if any of you are keeping up with that, but I'm doing it to my own art, so it's okay. I'm not being an asshat and doing quote-unquote fixes of people's work that never asked for it. Uh, but. I'm just trying to make this slightly better than what it was. I feel like I was working from a kind of crappy base to begin with. And so uh, this this is just like a, I, I, I'm kind of working with a slight garbage because my thumbnail and my original one I was using was kind of garbage. And so this is just, you're working with garbage in, garbage out. So it's, it's not the best going in. It's not going to be the best coming out. Uh, adding more glow here, I, I think I tone it back a little bit. I hope, uh, if I remember correctly, because I think it was a little bit, it was a little bit too much. So here I'm coming into Photoshop. This is pretty much what I just use Photoshop for because I feel like the noise filter in Photoshop is just superior to the one in Clip Studio Paint, unfortunately. So uh, I'm just using that one here. But other than that, just doing that. And uh, here's the old one, and. Um, We'll see the new one in a second here. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. New video coming soon, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Keep painting, keep drawing, get that mileage going, and uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll catch you guys later.